If you long for raw, unadulterated horsepower, mind-numbing comfort, extreme maneuvering capabilities, and have crowds of attractive females drooling over your every move, wow. then keep looking. This is a 1973, or maybe 1971, I don't know. Articat Panther 340, baby. The king cat of the land. Hey, Henry, you got yourself a brand new cat. Wow, look at the spread on those skis. My extra stability. <laughs> it's beautiful, Henry. How does it feel to own the best, Henry? <laughs> Mighty good. <laughs> I have COVID. I actually do. Right now, I have COVID. Anyways, I actually don't even know how much I paid for this thing. I think it was 400 bucks. I bought it from a friend slash coworker. Normally, I would never buy anything that I have not heard run before. But this was a different situation. I know this thing's gonna run. It ran, I think, like five years ago or something like that. Anyway, so what they did tell me when I bought it was that the pull assembly on this thing was broken. So they gave me a new one and I'm assuming that's the broken one. We gotta throw this on there. It also has bad gas in it, I'm sure of it. Let me smell this. Give it the old whiff test. Oh, oh, look at that dipstick. Oh. <coughs> I don't know if that was the COVID making me cough or the uh, bad smell. <laughs> so that is no bueno. We don't like to see that. So definitely need to flush out that bad gas, which I finally broke down. You guys are gonna love this. I finally did it, guys. I finally broke down and I bought one. A siphon pump, 17 bucks at Home Depot. I'm really sick of getting gas in my mouth. So actually, let's just go through this whole thing. I'll show you guys. It's got a track on it that's pretty decent, but it's got the cleats on it, the little metal cleats, which go across the track. I'm sure you guys have seen them. It's they're very common on the old sleds. They don't do them anymore, of course, because when one of those breaks off, it shoots it right up in your tunnel and causes bad things. So I would love to get a new track on it. We got this beautiful leopard print, cheetah print, panther print, whatever it is print seat which i think is amazing honestly i, I love that Let's see what horses we got under the hood here got an extra belt that's nice a little bit used but that's okay small motor 340 motor it's a jlo motor if you guys are familiar with those looks like these have been replaced somewhat in the past decade or so i don't see any mouse chew marks you should uh, i'll get a compression tester on this thing but Here's where the new pull assembly is going to go and what I wanted to check real quick while we have you on camera here. Okay, so see these little teeth right here? This is what actually grabs onto the starter, the, I mean the uh, pull assembly. And if those, any of those were chunked off, we'd have some big issues. But thankfully nothing. Everything looks good under here. It doesn't even look that worn, honestly. So that looks good. So we just got to put the new pull assembly on there and that should be fine. That's an easy fix. So far everything checks out. I can check these plugs here. See what those look like. You see a little bit of exhaust leak. That's normal. Belt on it looks decent. Feels decent. We don't have any fuel in the lines, which at this point is a good thing. We got metal skis, of course. I'd love to throw some plastic skis on it, but I might try to keep this totally uh, original, you know? Pretty much everything on it is original. It's not in great shape, but it's definitely not in bad shape, especially for the for the year. I think it's pretty badass, honestly. I had to buy it. 3,161 miles on this old girl. Throttle cable's not stuck. Brakes may work, I'm not sure. Choke? Oh, look at that. Choke runs smooth. What we got here, these lights. Yeah, high and low lights. Don't know if those are gonna work or not. Push and turn. Hmm. I always like how these old school sleds are designed. You know, they got like a tank in the back and then you got this cool little cushion thing that goes over the tank. Pretty neat. So take a look at this. This is the tank. <laughs> how simple that is. It's just a little square tank. Ah, look at that. Boom, there goes the seat. Not as easy as I thought it was gonna be. All right, so in hopes of not going completely insane, I decided to abort this mission. I know I had those two little grooves on each side, but I couldn't figure it out, so I went online. Somebody actually posted on the forums, because apparently this is a common pain in the ass. There's just a bunch of stuff going on. I'm just not even gonna do that. Yeah, yeah. All right. I'd say we've probably got quarter tank in there. I got my old uh, gas, bad gas jug right here, which actually has the old MXZ gas, and if you guys remember that. We're gonna try not to make a mess here. Oh, there it is. She nasty. I think the fumes killed my dog. All right, for my next act, I'm gonna get some fresh gas. 
put it in the tank, swish it around. We'll pump it out again, make sure we get all the bad stuff. You know, I haven't seen any rust yet, which is a great thing. Here's the old 800 Hardy Cat. Gotta get that running this year too. Gotta fix the clutch on it. And don't look in here, it's trashy. Throw some new gas in it. I'm gonna lean on one side just to make sure I can get this hose in here. Should be enough. The good news is though, it doesn't smell that bad right now. So maybe it's just that flow that had a whole bunch of nasty gas on it already. So I got the sled leaning on my bucket of parts here. That way all the gas is gonna be in this corner right about here. I took a coat hanger and I ran it through the tube and that way I can put it right where I want it to be and by good rights oh yeah there we go so I actually put two swishes of fresh gas in there pumped it out and we should be clean as a friggin whistle in there so that's good we can start working on the motor side of things I think I might clean the carburetor first Actually, maybe I'll try the pull assembly because then if I need bolts, I can run down to the hardware store. So let's get that thrown on there first. And then we can also see how much compression this baby's got. So this is the new old one. I see right here, we got some chunks taken out of the case. Let's see if it pulls over here. It's not, sl not sliding back. Sometimes you gotta, there we go, okay. It's not rope, because a lot of the old sleds, they had steel wire, but it still could cost some fraying over time so I'll just have to watch out for that too but let's at least get it on there and pull this over and see what happens check out this housing so it, it it's weird because it looks like it's the right housing but you see the bolt here there's a bolt on each side underneath and one on that side as well so it fits on there and you can see it's flush with the uh, motor side but how do we bolt it onto there not sure what's going on there so either that is the wrong one or there's another metal piece that goes on the motor side and attaches to the recoil. What I could do, and it's not ideal, is you know, I could do the whole motions, you know, clean the carb, get everything ready, shove my foot in there, and then pull it over. Not ideal, and that's how you end up breaking some things, but I really wanted to get this running for you guys in this video. This is actually a Tillotson carb, which is the same thing as we have in our 340 uh, Raider over here, oddly enough. Had a couple of those run through the shop. One thing I noticed, you always want to take a look at everything else you got going on, but one thing I just noticed here is the throttle cable starting to fray a little bit, as you can see, which I've had on other sleds, and I've actually had it down to like one strand before, and still ran it, but what it's going to happen is that's that's going to break someday and you may be out in the trails and then be totally screwed so that's going to have to be replaced at some point boom baby behold the Tillotson carburetor exterior looks good but that doesn't really say anything I don't see any funny business going on down there we might be in luck this thing might actually be clean cracker open Pretty much what goes on here is just a sandwich. Everything looks clean so far. No rips. Looks pretty clean in there as well. Everything works slick. Choke works fine. Everything. Everything looks clean, man. I would drink out of this cup. So it's all back on there. Honestly, that went a lot smoother than I thought it was going to. I thought it was going to look really nasty in there, but looks like somebody shut the gas off. They probably ran it uh, out of gas so that none of the bad stuff would be sitting in the carburetor, you know, so good thing to do. These look brand new. And this guy, also brand new. So potentially one of life's biggest controversies is uh, putting gasoline down your cylinders. I understand down in the comments, people get really rowdy about this whole thing, but I don't really care. I'm gonna do it anyways. Fresh gas. Got gas down in the cylinders. Got a dog here. We're just gonna push the uh, recoil up against here, try to hold it and pull it over my left hand. It's not ideal. Maybe I'll put my foot on it or something. Yeah. Oh, oh, that, that fits nice. Oh, did you hear that? Oh, definitely heard it. Choke on. Woo, in there. Oh, that was the longest yet. 
Good morning, just like that. It is yesterday's tomorrow. We are back at it here with the Art Cat Panther. I left this place a giant disaster, but did a little bit of research last night. Found out a few things. A, this is a 1971, and you can tell by the plate here, the first number of the sequence is a one. That means 1971, apparently. Second, I paid $300 for this, not 400. And third, Talked to my friend last night who sold me this thing. She says, oh yeah, the bolts for the recoil are in the glove box, which was right here, which I would have seen if I wasn't preoccupied with Sasquatch. Sasquatch. Which I remember her saying when I bought the thing and I just totally forgot. So check this out. This is how this works. They go in the bolt holes and these little tabs right here hold the recoil in place. Who would have thought? So we're gonna throw these on the recoil and we're gonna start pulling this thing over again. And we're gonna, I. We have to get this thing running today. If not, I'm gonna light all my sleds on fire and I'm never gonna ride again. Okay, so just like that. You see how that little tab bites into that groove? I couldn't get this one on here. I see there was a larger bolt, so this uh, the hole is stripped out. So eventually I'll have to fix that, but I got three out of four. Three out of four ain't bad, I was always told, so. <laughs> Hang on, hang on. I did that off camera. I gotta show you on camera now. Unbelievable. I wasn't expecting to, so I didn't start the camera. But I just was like, you know, screw it. Just pull it once, boom, fired right up. Amazing. Nothing. I don't know if it'll be in this video, but I'll see you when the snow flies. We're gonna rip this thing around. 